The 2020 fire season in California was the state's largest fire season in history. And as of this video's recording, 2021 looks to be another dry year prime for more devastating fires. Understandably, there's been a lot of recent discussion about fires, particularly about what is to blame for causing them. Here are three reasons why California is always on fire. Number one, fuel. You may have heard of the fire triangle, which explains the three things you need for a fire to occur, oxygen, heat, and fuel. Outdoors, oxygen is pretty much a given, so we can treat it as a constant. But the other two sides of the triangle, heat and fuel, are very much in flux. Fuel relates to things that can burn, like trees, shrubs, grasses, and even houses. And California has a ton of fuel. When you're in the forest, have you ever noticed how dense it is? You can't go more than 10 feet off a trail without getting all scraped up from shrubs and small trees all crowded together. When I was younger, I just thought that this was the way that forests are supposed to be. But it didn't always look this way. Historic photographs from the turn of the 20th century show that Sierra Nevada forests were far more open than they are today. The forest had so much space, you could pretty much just take your horse in whichever direction you wanted. So what changed between then and now that would lead to a forest with far more fuel? The answer is that there were way more fires back then than there are today. In fact, for thousands of years, California Indians utilized fire to manage forest lands for obtaining certain foods, hunting, and creating a nice open space to live and move around. Because forests burned regularly, fuels wouldn't build up enough to make catastrophic fires. In essence, fires then weren't very severe and perhaps even healthy. This continued essentially right up until the creation of the Forest Service and the birth of modern firefighting. Now, don't get me wrong. The Forest Service and firefighters have done an amazing job at protecting our forests, and they've saved countless lives and so much property. But because they are so good at what they do, available fuel in the forest has built up and up, unburned for nearly a century. And although over 90% of fires are put out right away, there's no way that they can get to every single one in time to put it out. And all it takes is one fire to go on long enough for it to take advantage of our fuel-packed forest and become uncontrollable. In March, I saw the effects of this firsthand by surveying the results of the 2020 Creek Fire near Shaver Lake, California. The Creek Fire burned over 380,000 acres of land, making it the fourth largest fire in state history. Tragically, it destroyed over 800 structures, many of them homes, as it burned for more than three months. In these images, you can see where the fire burned with high severity, killing nearly everything, including mature trees that form an important part of the forest ecosystem. The fire here became so intense in part due to the high levels of fuel that had accumulated without burning for so long. In other parts of the fire, particularly after firefighters had slowed its progress, the fire burned at a more moderate severity, removing surface fuels and burning the bases of larger trees, but not completely scorching them. So check this out, it's kind of shaded so it's hard to see, but the base of this tree here is pretty burned, but you look up and it's doing okay. You know, its crown is fine. Same with the rest of the trees, so they're probably gonna make it. And that's kind of what we want. We want these more mature trees to survive and everything, all the brush beneath them, all this litter has been really cleared out. And look at how much more open it is through here. So I'm out of that area that had that kind of less severe sort of burn, kind of a more moderate one in terms of its intensity um, where you could walk right through. But when we get to this part that hasn't been burned, it's like a wall just popped up and I couldn't get 10 feet through here without, you know, scraping myself really bad. Um, and so, you know, you'll know that there's all these juvenile little trees that kind of look like little Christmas trees. Um, and they are just kind of rubbing right up against one another um, all throughout the forest. There's a lot more shrubs and if we look at the litter here, it's really thick and dense. So, you know, before we only saw pine needles, but here we've got the same sort of dead woody material that you could use to build a campfire. And it would be, you know, more of like a bonfire with the amount of, of just ready to burn wood throughout this area. 
So to summarize, because we've done such a good job at preventing fires for nearly 100 years, there's now so much fuel in the forest that once a fire starts, it gets out of hand really quickly. Reason number two, heat. For a fire to start, it needs to be above a fuel's flash point, which for wood is about 570 degrees. For that reason, you need something to ignite a fire like lightning or a gender reveal party. Once the flash point is reached, that temperature needs to be maintained for the fire to spread. And warmer weather can help this happen. Fuels that are already warm from a hot environment will ignite more easily than colder fuels because they're closer to their flash point. But more importantly, warmer weather dries fuels, making them much more vulnerable to fire. So climate change is something that we can't ignore in explaining California fires. As you can see, there is a tight relationship between increasingly warm weather in the West and the size of wildfires in recent years. Additionally, as temperature and aridity increase, snowpack declines, making fire seasons longer than ever before and stretching our resources to fight fire thin. So to return to our fire triangle, fire suppression explains our high fuel loads and climate change explains heat. So what's the last reason for California's wildfires? And the answer is, well, us. We've rejected fire for so long that it's become inescapable. We need to come to terms with the fact that the dense forests we know today aren't really supposed to look this way. It's kind of a paradox, but to save our forests from fire, we need to let them occasionally burn. And California Indians have perfected this type of burning over thousands of years. It's only sensible to allow them to have greater access to land for cultural burning. We enjoy visiting our forests and living within them. But in order to prevent massive fires in the future, we need more controlled fires now. As my Smokey Bear knockoff combustion bunny says, only you can advocate for controlled burns in California. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe to Poopy Archaeology for more videos about the past. Yeah.